So we both think that that's a pretty fair estimation of 22 ounces. According to the markings on that pyrex, I can't testify whether that pyrex is correct or not. And you understand I wouldn't be quibbling about this except if we're measuring everything in ounces, right? Typically, it wouldn't make sense to worry about two ounces here, two ounces there, but it's important when we're coming up with calculations like this. Would you agree with me? Certainly. You don't know exactly how big the pores were uh, that the waitress was carrying to the table. Oh, don't she even use that glass. No, right. That wasn't yeah. part of my estimation. Okay. Well, and as well, we'll, walk, we'll walk through what we just done. Um, Mr. Little, you and I measured out 22 ounces of water. Is that correct? You measured 22 ounces of water into a Pyrex container according to the markings on that container, poured it into that glass, and it slightly overflowed. Okay. And you verified the 22 ounce measurement that I made? Uh, again, uh, st according to the values written by Pyrex on the side of that container, that that's what it stated 22 ounces was. Right. Okay. And, uh, and, and when filled, the exhibit uh, overflowed, correct? Yes. Okay. But it's 22 ounces that you used for your estimate here, correct? Correct. So, um, and I believe that there was also a 16 ounce glass and you used a full 16 ounces as your, mes as your measurement. I was beer. provided with two 16 ounce beers and two 22 ounce beers. Okay. All right, John Mobley, want to go to you first on this one. Effective or no, in your view? I'm thinking not effective. I mean, I think sometimes, you know, um, all of us are guilty of a little bit of hot dog in the courtroom of trying to create that Perry Mason <laughs> moment. But I, I agree that you can lose the jurors with it, and sometimes it's better to keep it very simple. And I don't think he scored a whole lot of points with this demonstration. Yeah, I'm with you, John. Daryl, what do you think? 1,000% agree. <laughs> Way too much. He's got to learn the KISS method. Keep it short, <laughs> stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. These jurors are going to be so bored that they're going to make a decision based upon what they believe the evidence is, based upon her likability or credibility. Mm -hmm. And her lawyer is doing her no favors, mm -hmm. in my view. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you where I felt like the jury might have gotten distracted, because I know I got a little distracted. Uh, as I was watching this, and the clip we just played didn't show it, but you can take my word for it. When he filled up the, the measuring cup to a certain line, he asked the expert to take a look at it and see if it was satisfactory, if he felt like it was over or under the 22-ounce mark. And when he said he thought it was over to remove some, instead of pouring it into another container, he just reached his hand in and started, like, pulling, somehow pulling out the water. I, it was, like, dripping. And, and I, we all of it, you know, us back here were going, ew, <laughs> You put your hand in the water, and that's really not the way we thought you would, you know, eliminate some of it. And I, jurors tend to, to notice those little details and the spilling after the fact when it's pouring all over the, the rug, presumably, in the courtroom. John, uh, what did you think of that, please? Yeah, you know, I think that's the problem when you try to go for these, these wow hotshot moments uh, in front of a witness that's not your witness. I mean, they're going to throw you curveballs. They're not going to give you what you want. And you're the one that ends up looking caught off guard and unprepared and, and the experiment, the whole grand design, the whole grand scheme kind of falls apart. And I think that's why, once again, I just don't think it's a good idea to do these these hot dog type experiments in a trial. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Yeah, if you haven't practiced it and rehearsed it and you're able to carry it through seamlessly, don't do it, right? Um, Daryl, yeah, do you think the jury could have gotten distracted by some of that, like him sticking his hand and trying to out the water and then spilling it. When he well, it. I don't know how much the jury liked Zach Brown, but it reminds <laughs> me of I've got my toes in the water, my rear in the sand, yeah. <laughs> etc. I think the jury has got to be laughing. And each and every member of that jury behind his or her face is got has got to be laughing. This is just ridiculous. And Harry Potter would have been happy with ridiculous. But <laughs> this is absurd. And I don't see how he's helping his client. Mm -hmm. Just don't. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I was excited. And at first, I was kind of like, oh, boy, this is good. Because these are good lawyers. I mean, I, in, in my view, watching them, I mean, I thought the opening statements were very good. And things have been solid. This was kind of an experiment that sort of went awry. I think we can all agree. But it, I think it was off to a good start. And then just kind of end up going over like a, a lead balloon for this jury. Uh, but at the end of the day... Um, 
Uh, something I wanted to bring up with you both, because in your, in your criminal defense practices, I'm sure you handle DUI cases often, and typically we do have you know, blood drawn or a breathalyzer test, or if somebody's refusing to do one or the other, uh, they might be observed on the scene and be able to undergo what are called field sobriety tests, as you know, where an officer is going to analyze how they're able to walk and maintain their balance and their eye movements, things like that. But here, because she was, well, I guess turned herself in, I should say, not brought in, but willingly went to police after the fact, so many hours had passed, they weren't able to look at her. So I would think that would be very favorable to the defense not having those things. Uh, John, I want to get your thoughts on that, please. Um, I definitely agree from that standpoint. I mean, you know, um, and I think, in, you know, in most DUI cases, in the standard DUI case, you don't have a dead officer. So, you know, the, the intangibles are different. You know, the juries, jurors don't feel compelled to, to render a guilty verdict when there's no real victim. So nobody got hurt. There's no real evidence of a blood alcohol content. There's no evidence of fields or body tests. And once again, all those things can be easily attacked by an experienced DUI defense attorney. So, you know, I, I do agree that, that is a problem, you know, for the state from that standpoint. So what they're really relying on are, is a testimony that she consumed, you know, the, you know, this alcohol, the two beers and the lemon drop. So what, what they have is the jury trying to make a decision based on that. Now, what are they going to look at? They're going to look at her size. You know, I think if you're a defense attorney, you, know, you look at a person's size, a person who weighs 200 pounds versus a person who weighs 100 pounds. The amount of, the amount of alcohol is going to affect them differently. It's not going to have the same effect. You know, so you can, you know, uh, bring out factors like that to attack the any real evidence of impairment or from the consumption of alcohol. Right, definitely, John. Daryl, I want to ask you, anything you would add to that from a defense perspective? What, if anything, might be in the defense team's best interest to do to try to refute what the state is doing, bringing in their toxicology expert and things like that? Any thoughts on what they could potentially present to this jury? I think the defense lawyer is going to try everything he can to rehab his screw-ups. So my advice to him would be to say, thank you very much, sit down and limit what he has already done to his client. KYD, BMS, keep your damn big mouth shut. <laughs> Normally, we make that reference to a client. But in this instance, I think we need to make that reference to her lawyer. Daryl Cohen, John Mobley, great to have your insight. Thank you both. We're going to squeeze